All right, now we're live. So can everybody take out 3.5? And away we go. Yesterday we did a really uh, cute little activity where we were playing with numbers and trying to figure out if you get a number, if I give you a number and I, I say that, uh, or, or if I give you actually two numbers and I say, what, what two numbers add to make this and then, and then multiply to make that, if you found that activity was easy, then you're probably going to find this skill fairly easy. Basically factoring, oops, factoring is breaking down numbers into factors that multiply to produce themselves. And another way you can think of factoring is in algebra, Factoring is the opposite operation to expanding or distributing. There we go. So there's our definition of factoring. So we'll start with that. Anybody caught up to me? To factor a trinomial of the form x squared plus bx plus c, where b and c are integers, ask yourself, say self, what two integers multiply to make C but add to make B. And I'll use my highlighter. There's C. And there is, of course, So let's start with example number one. This little lesson won't take long, and then you get some time to work today. So example one, x squared plus 9x plus 20. Well, I'm basically asking you what two binomials multiply to make this trinomial. Maybe I should go back to the, before I do the example, and put a second bullet here. then place those two integers as the constants, or as the, what should I, do I want the word constant? Not necessarily, they could have, they could have var variables in them. Place those two integers as the um, second terms in the binomials, and I'll just kind of show you what I mean by the binomials. And again, yellow one 
or no, I don't want a different, uh, stick to black. And those two integers, let me use a different color here. Let's use blue. So the integers I'm looking for go here and here. So there we go. So to factor a trinomial, that's what we want to do. Okay, so let's start there. I need two binomials that if I foiled them, I would get x squared plus 9x plus 20. So, well, I know that x squared comes from multiplying multiplying x by x. So there isn't a whole lot of thought that has to be put into that. Now, here's the next thing I like to do. So first thing I'm going to do, so I'm going to call that step one. I know x times x equals x squared. So each bracket starts with x and x. So that's step one. Step two, I'm going to determine signs. So I'm going to ask you, in this example here, if I have a positive result from multiplying this number by this number, I have only two ways that that can happen. Either the two things that multiplied were both positive or they were both negative, right? Because if you multiply a positive times a positive, you get a positive. If you multiply a negative by a negative, you get a positive. But these two blue numbers here have to add to make this positive 9. Can you add a negative and a negative and get a positive? No, you can't. So I know that this has to be plus and plus. So I'll say in this case, I know by logic and reasoning that it has to be plus and plus. Now step three is the activity we did yesterday. Find the constants. And again, I ask myself this question. So I'll put a little, little asterisk here and go up and ask yourself that question. What two integers multiply to make 20 and add to make 9? I know it's 4 and 5, so that's what goes there and there. 4 and 5 guys in the chat got it right away too. Nice job. Do you see the logic? Now, I can check to see if this is true. And I can misspell the word check. Check. I can check to make sure this is true. If I multiply this out, I get x squared plus 5x plus 4x plus 20. And those two things are like terms x squared plus 9x plus 20, check. So I basically I check by foiling my binomials to see if I get the right trinomial that I started with. And I did. Any questions on how I did that? All right. You only get better at this stuff by practice. So let's do some practice. Let's look at the next one. Okay, so let's run through the steps again. So step one, again, I know that on step one, I know that it's x and x, because that's the only way you can multiply to get x squared. Step two, step two. Think about this logically. Whatever multiplies to make the 7 has to add to make the negative 8. 
So if you're multiplying two numbers and you get a positive, they're either both positive or they're both negative. But they add to make a negative. What does that tell you? I know both second terms are negative. So I know that I have x minus, oh wait a minute, let's go back to, let's, go, let's color code this better. Let's go back to the green. So I have x and x, and now I know that I can put minus and minus. And then finally, last step, what two integers multiply to make 7, but add to make, that's two words, to make is not a word, to make negative 8. Now, 7 is a prime number, so there isn't a whole lot to choose from. It's got to be negative 1 and negative 7, so I know that I have a 1 and a 7 here. And that's my answer. And those three steps are the three logical things I did in my head to get that answer. All right. You guys want to try one on your own? You don't have to write the three steps anymore. Let's just kind of keep doing them in our heads. I'm not going to write them out in words anymore. That's enough writing for one math class when it comes to words. Let's stick to symbols and numbers, shall we? And of course, numbers are symbols. Let's stick to symbols. All right, your turn. See if you can come up with the two binomials using the three steps we've just been doing. I'll give you a few seconds here to think it through. Okay, guys in the chat, don't, don't type it in this time. Let everybody try it, okay? Let everybody have a chance to think about it for a sec. And if you found three easy, you can try four. Don't skip on to, don't do uh, example five yet, though. We got to talk about five. But if you can do three real quick, try four. All right, did you get, obviously, x and x? Two numbers that times to make a negative can only happen if one of them's a positive and one of them's a negative. And now I ask myself the question, what two numbers times to make negative 8 but would add to make negative 2? And it has to, positive, which one's the positive? That's it. It has to be positive 2 and negative 4. Okay. Is this the same answer? Yeah, it doesn't matter what order you multiply two numbers. And in my mind, this is just a number times a number. I know that it looks like a lot of numbers, right? It's a binomial and a binomial. But to me, they're just a value, right? As soon as you tell me what x is, I can tell you exactly what those two numbers are, right? So to me, that's, that's, this mathematically is the same answer. It would be wrong. Don't write this down. It would be wrong if I wrote it like this. And... Think about it, why would that be wrong? Because if I foiled this out, notice I wouldn't exactly get this back again. I would get plus 2 as the middle term, which isn't the same trinomial, is it? I need these two binomials to make that trinomial. So that one wouldn't work. Okay, the right answer is that. Okay, so if you tried example 3, try example 4. And again, I don't care what order the factors are in. It's like you're making a factor tree for this trinomial. You should probably be paying attention to what we're doing and get off your phone. Looking 
making up words again? Is that what you're doing? Okay. Sure you understand what we're doing. Okay. All right. Next. Did you get that it's x and x? Again, that's pretty obvious by now, I hope. What two numbers times to make four and add to make six? Well, if they times to make a plus and, and add to make a plus, they're definitely both plus. And eight breaks down into four and two. Oops, two, come back. My pen died mid number. There we go. All right, example five. Look for a common factor first. So what do you notice about 4x squared, 16x, and 128? They all have a 4 in them. And, okay, you might have to use a little bit of thinking on this one. 4 goes into 12 three times and into 8 twice. Now, factor the trinomial. Question? Well, I w starting now, it'll be the same way. Right? Um, okay. The question in class was, why couldn't we try factoring this thing without factoring out the 4? We can, but what we'd get is an answer that isn't fully factored. The question from home was, why can't we just divide it by 4? Can I point out to you that this thing here is not an equation? Right? If you have an equation, don't write this down, but if you have an equation... like that, and you look at that and go, oh, I'd like to make my equation easier by dividing it by 4. What you really mean is you're actually going to divide both sides of the equation by 4. And if you think about cross-multiplying, this 4 could go up to here. And it's like actually what you really did is you multiplied your equation by 1, which doesn't change the equation, right? Because you did it to both sides. So it's still the same equation. So dividing both sides by 4 and making it x, making it x plus 2 equals 4, doesn't change the equation anyway. This equation and that equation are exactly the same equation. But an expression doesn't have another side. It doesn't have an equals that it's equal to some other thing. So because this is just an expression, I just can't divide it by something because I feel like it. At the end of the day, whatever I come up with for my answer here has to multiply to make this back again. So the 4 can't disappear. Does the logic of that make sense to you? But yeah. I can keep going. This trinomial follows the rules of my other trinomials. So give it a try. Obviously, x and x. Mm -hmm. What do I know about the signs? If you times two things and get a negative, what do you know about them? One's a positive, one's a negative. And then you think about the number 32, and you go, can I think of two factors of 32 that multiply and make four, or that, sorry, that multiply and make 32, but add and make four, because one's a positive, one's a negative. So they're four apart. Then you ask yourself, okay, which one gets the negative? Or which one gets the positive, whichever way you want to think about it? Well, they add to make negative four, so the eight has to be the negative. And again, if you want to do a check, some of the questions in the textbook will actually ask you to do a check. If you multiply this thing out, first I'll multiply the brackets together. You get x squared minus 8x plus 4x minus 32. If, then I'll collect the like terms, and I'll get x squared minus 4x minus 32. And then if I multiply out the 4, distribute the 4 through the bracket, I get 4x squared minus 16x minus 128. Check. Okay, can, you, can you just hold on a sec? I'm going to plug you into the speakers because the speaker on this laptop is terrible. Um, hold on. This might sound sc scratchy for a sec. There, can you say, say your question again? Why 
can't you just put it in the first way you did? Why can't I? I still don't quite understand your question. Why can't I what? The first, the the way you did it the first time. Well, the first. Okay, the the way I did it, for example, in example four. Well, because notice the difference here is that there is a one here and there is a four here. And again, I'm trying to come up with the smallest factors I can. Think about making factor trees back in grade five, right? If you had the number 36 and you went two and 18 and say, well, I'm going to stop there. Well, no, because 18 isn't a prime number. You keep going. And it's like, oh, well, six isn't a prime number either. You keep going until you hit prime numbers. So as soon as I noticed that all three of these terms had a four as a factor, I factored that out first. Is there a way I could have factored it differently where I could have actually, say, come up with uh, a different scenario? Yeah, because technically, I mean, take a look at these three factors that I get. I could say that 4x plus 16 times x minus 8, come on, minus, would also give me, if I foiled that out, the same answer here. But is it done? It's not really done because it's like leaving the factor tree and saying I'm done when I hit here. This has a common factor of 4 in both of its terms. So I would factor out a 4. And now I'm done. So that's the goal. The goal is to get this thing down to its prime factors, the same way I did with numbers back in grade 5. All right, what do I notice about the second one, or the, the sixth one? Do you notice a common factor? Always look for a common factor first. The first rule of factoring is no one talks about factoring. Oh, I'm sorry, that's Fight Club. The first rule of factoring is always look for a common factor. So what is the common factor in this one? Five is good, but I can do you one better. Instead of factoring out a five, you know what you should factor out? A negative five. Because remember, what, what makes this easy, what allows me to go back and do the rest of the question the way, the way I did example three and example four, is if I can make this h squared not have a coefficient except for one in front of it. And now my pen is, I must have clicked that by accident. There we go. So negative five is what I'm going to take out of here. leaving me h squared. Okay, if I take negative 5 out of negative 20, it leaves behind 4. And if I take negative 5 out of 60, it leaves me negative, how many 5s in 60? Is it 15? No, 12, that's better. There we go. All right, and now I can do this part. I can do this part the same way I did examples 1, 2, 3, and 4. So next part, negative 5, and then h and h. The two numbers I'm looking for multiply to make a negative, so it's got to be a plus and a minus. And what two factors of 12? Now, if you're having a hard time doing this in your head, feel free to make a list of 12's factors. Make a factor tree if you like. But I need to find the two factors that multiply to make 12. But if one of them's negative and the other one's positive, I add them and I get positive 4. So that's going to be plus 6 and minus 2. And that's how we do trinomial factoring. Okay, so I'll end the video lesson there because that's basically it for the video. And let's pick some questions to practice this stuff. Okay, so end recording.